Hi, I'm Emily Humble here for FPAC tonight. We are at Fairfield's First Friday's Art Walk, all things Italian street fair, where there's lots going on tonight. So we're going to be walking around and showing you about some of the great events that are going on here on Fairfield on a Friday night. As you can see behind me, lots of things are going on. There's a puppeteer over there, so we'll talk to him and lots of other people here tonight. All right, tonight we're here with the man of the hour, Dick DeAngelis, president of Sophia Society of Fairfield Italian Americans. And Dick, the weather held off tonight. The rain and thunderstorms rolled out. What did you do to get this? Rain? What, what rain? We, we didn't even think about it. Sunshine and clear skies. That's right. It's a gorgeous night, and I know we have so many activities and things going on tonight. Why don't you just kind of give us a rundown about what's going to be happening? Well, there's, you know, all the restaurants are, are going Italian for the evening, and so there's great food there, and hy vees here with sausage and pepper sandwiches, and, and then there's gelato and Italian ice, and there's food in the piazza. So that covers a little bit of the food. And I also heard about a thousand cannolis. Tell us what those are. <laughs> uh, team cannolis right behind me. They've got over uh, 22 people on their team just developing a cannoli to the per to perfection, over a thousand cannoli. And then we have Italian desserts made by members of Sofia. And you wouldn't want to miss that either. So and then for music, we have an Italian tenor singing. We have a Zampogna player, Italian bagpipes. Uh, an Italian dance troupe, and then we have a jazz band, Papology, that will be playing a little bit in the gazebo, but then also from 9 to 11 here live on the square. And I also understand we have someone who sings like Frank Sinatra, is this true? Uh, we do, the Papology group has that, but then of course at 840 when we thank everybody, I'll break out with That's Amore, so you wouldn't want to miss that. All either. right, so everybody be sure to check that out here tonight as well. All right, Dick, well thank you very much. Make sure you have a cannoli now. Okay, I'm on it. Okay? If there's a thousand, I should be able to get a couple, right? Absolutely, we'll take good care <laughs> of you. All right, thank you, Dick. All right. All right, now we're here with Team Cannoli and our team captain, Russell Malloy. Russell, how's things going out here tonight? Excellent. Looks like you're making thousands of cannolis. How many are you making approximately? Well, we ordered 1,300 shells. 300 of them came in broken, so we have about 1,000 shells to sell. And so what exactly is a cannoli for all those people who haven't had one yet? A cannoli is a, I guess you could say, a traditional Italian dessert which you know came actually from when the Muslims controlled Italy at that time. It's a sweet cheese is a Muslim thing. But the Italians adopted it as their own and they've kind of perfected the technique. And the cannoli is, it's a fried dough shell, a sweet dough shell, with sweet ricotta cheese and you know, a couple extra things in there and then you can top the ends. That's a cannoli. And so what, what are people saying about them tonight? I know there's a whole line back over there full of people waiting in line to get their cannoli in. What are people saying? This, this cannoli booth here is a phenomenon. Last year we sold out of all our cannoli shells in 45 minutes. This year I ordered three times the amount, so I don't anticipate selling out that fast this year. But, you know, uh, people are starved for good tasting uh, treats here in Iowa, so it's something that they need. That's right. And approximately how many hours has it taken you to, like, prepare all of this? Well, to, the ordering probably took maybe an hour. Transport of everything, an hour and then four hours to make the filling, and then the three hours to create them here. And I understand that you enlisted some of the help of uh, a brother of yours, right? Oh yes, the famous mayor of Fairfield. <laughs> so that's right, so the mayor can cook, apparently, right? The mayor can cook, he was, he was instrumental in making the uh, cannoli mix uh, what it is today. All right, well thank you very much. You're you better get welcome. back to work, I think people are demanding more Absolutely. cannolis. Hey, cannolis! <laughs> All right, thank you very much.
All right, we're here at the bocce ball courts where a lot of excitement's going on. Everybody's throwing things around. Ken, what's going on? This is such a great traditional game, and um, I grew up playing this as a little kid. To be quite honest, we used to play, you know, picnics on Sunday afternoons at my grandmother's house, but this was not a kid's game. This was only guys. This was the adults. The game. This was only guys. This was the adults. The uncles oh. would play, and they would just play for hours, and then when they were done, then the kids could play. So who, which of the brothers won most often? Uh, certainly it was Ed. Ed was a really very, very good thrower. He had the height, he had the spin going, so it, he, he had the touch. Now, if you guys were all to play tonight, who would win? Me. I would. Have you been practicing? I have a lot of practice. Okay. And I, I see he's not here to play, so I guess it's a forfeit? I, I, I think so. <laughs> and, and neither's Russell, so you win. Well, he's, he's baking, so he's doing good. So you guys having fun? You gonna play? Yeah. Well, I tried it out over here a little bit, and I, I think I did okay. Good. So what? Why don't you tell us real quick what kind of the object of the game is? Object of the game. It starts off with a little white ball, which is called the Polina, and it's very simple. You just want to, your team wants to be the closest one to the Polina. Each one that is closest gets one point. So each team has four balls, so you can get up to five points per turn because. If your ball is actually touching the ball, the Paulina, the small white ball, then you get two points. That's a kiss. But oh, okay, I thought someone. I saw that on the board, and I thought someone had to kiss someone. No, well, I, <laughs> I put it there just for just for kicks. Yeah, just for kicks. But um, it's really great. People who have never played can learn it in one minute. It's a lot of fun. You don't have to have a lot of skill, and who can throw a ball and toss and roll it down the lawn? So I recommend it for everybody. All right, that's Bocce Ball here at Fairfield's first Friday's Art Walk at the All Things Italian Fest going on tonight. Thanks, Ken. Have a Thank great night. Thank you. I'm here now with our special guest, Ron, who some of you may not be able to see quite yet. Oh, here he is. He's just a little bit taller than me. Um, I think he had a growth spurt here. So, Ron, why don't you tell us what you're doing out here tonight? Well, I am the victim of a horrible bungee cord accident. I was, the rope didn't stretch and my body just got stretched out. So I'm 12 feet tall now. Wow, how, how is it up there? Well, it's good, it's good. Uh, but I wish that the city of Fairfield would make some handicapped entrances for extremely tall people like myself. Well, I will talk to the mayor and we'll go right on that next city council meeting. Okay, thank you very much. And while you're here, I buy all my t-shirts over at the Italian Festa Italiana table right over there. All right, well, we'll be sure to travel on over there too. You look very nice tonight. Where'd you find those pants? Um, I uh, happen to have a house in uh, Bogota, Colombia, South America, and the uh, National Theater Workshop there has excellent seamstresses. Well, great. Hey, you look dapper. Very dapper tonight. Are you having a lot of fun? Yes. This is great. Oh, yes. I'll be a tree. I'll clean your gutters. Yes. Okay, great. I'll call you on that. So basically, what are you doing around here tonight? You're talking to a lot of kids and showing them your moves? Yes, uh, welcoming everyone to the Italian festival and... Uh, 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 celebrating, definitely celebrating that it's not raining or anything else. That's right, because you'd feel it first. So will you let us know when you feel that first raindrop? <laughs> <laughs> right, I will feel it first. And where are you from? Um, I live here in Fairfield on B Street. I walked up from the house, yeah. So how far do you usually travel? Can you travel on those? Um, I did a 10K run in San Francisco, and at seven kilometers, my stilts broke. Oh, wow. Or one of them. So how often do you get on those? Uh, not too often, but for parties, parades, I, I get paid for a parade or like, for example, the uh, National uh, Heart Association fundraiser. I did that. The reason I'm rocking back and forth is because <laughs> it's I hard have, to stay still. <laughs> I have no toes down there. Oh. And if I stopped walking, I would fall over. OK, well, you keep moving and we'll <laughs> let you get back to business. Have fun tonight. And be careful. <laughs> okay, thank you. It was, thank fun, you. it was fun looking down your blouse. Oh. All right, now we're here with one of our returning guests from last year, the Zamponia player, Lionel Batari. Lionel, how's it going tonight? Oh, pretty well. Could be better, but could be worse. So what exactly is the Zamponia? The Zamponia is an instrument that's a dual chantered bagpipe, and it derives from the ancient double pipes of the Mediterranean, which were held in the mouth and played by circular breathing. That uh, tradition still exists in Italy, where uh, the Sardinians will hold these pipes in the mouth and play by circular breathing, sometimes for as long as half an hour without apparently taking a breath. And sometime back, I, we believe in Roman days, a bag and this technology came from the east, they say from Israel, 
and um, they added the bag to the pipes and then took that technology to the Scots and that's where the Scots got it from and I'm glad they've had so much fun with it. And when did you first start playing it? Uh, longer ago uh, than I'd care to. Uh, so for a while? Yeah, quite a while. And I haven't gotten terrific at it, but I, I feel I can maintain the tradition halfway decently. Could you play us a few notes? Yeah. All right, he's going to play us a little number now. Okay. really good. I know it, but off the top of my head for some reason, I can't think of it. I was having the words go through my head, though. It was uh, Ode to Joy. Yes. Uh, a piece of Ode to Joy, anyway. <laughs> That's really sad that I didn't get that, but I, like I said, I was singing the words in my head. Uh, happy, happy, happy birthday, happy birthday, Beethoven. So what are you going to be playing later for us? Uh, some traditional tunes. Uh, I'll be playing like some of the Christmas music that the bagpipe is associated with. Some of uh, the pastorals because it's a shepherd's instrument. It's not a martial instrument like the Scots bagpipe has become where it's played to a march beat. This is very slow and kind of stroll kind of music like you're walking with your sheep. And, and where are you from? I'm from Chicago. Okay, so you had a nice little drive over. Yeah, it wasn't bad, actually. It was pretty nice. Right. All the trucks are doing 60 miles an hour these days and save fuel, I imagine. Right. But it wasn't as hairy as it used to be. Well, great. And thank you very much for coming back this year. I hear you did a great job last year, and we welcome you back to Fairfield. I hope to uh, measure up to my last performance. Oh, you'll top it, I'm sure. Thanks. Have a good night. All right, as you can see, there's lots of vendors out here tonight at Art Walk, so we'll kind of walk along see what kind of things they have and stop and talk a little bit and see what's going on. Over here at this table looks like they're making something authentic Italian here. So let's stop and see what's going on. Excuse me, could you tell me what you're making tonight? A pasta. And what exactly is that? Pasta is this. Oh, pasta. <laughs> pasta. Is it, is it a special kind or? It's a pasta a la guitarra. Pasta a la guitarra because this is the guitarra making. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is this yeah. um, a very traditional type of pasta? Yes, making? this is very, very, very traditional in all Italy, yes. And like my grandmother do it and, uh, you know, me sometimes, but... And now, is this for sale or just for people to try? While we will cook everything and we will just offer. Okay, great. Okay. All right, thank you very okay. much. Bye. All right, let's see what else is going on here tonight at Art Walk. Do you want to keep going? Oops. Hi, Becky. <laughs> Looks like over here. I want to cut some of this. <laughs> I said we might want to cut like, some of this. All right, as we're walking along here, I see there's a huge line of people. So let's go see what everybody's waiting in line for. What are you guys waiting in line for? Pasta. Lasagna. Pasta. And is this homemade authentic? I believe it is. Have you heard it's pretty good? Yes. All right, so we'll, we'll keep moving forward and see about this pasta everybody's talking about on up here. I'm starting to smell something. You think it looks good? It looks great. All right, we'll keep moving on. And finally, we're here. All right, here is the highly anticipated, long awaited for pasta everybody's been talking about. Looks like it's great and homemade. Is this your special recipe? Yes. <laughs> and what's your name? Kathleen Johnson. All right, Kathleen. So is this a family recipe that's been passed down? Yes, it is, actually. And what's your, uh, is there a special ingredient or anything extra special that you do with your lasagna? <laughs> oh. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lots of love in it. Lots of love. All right. Well, it looks like everybody can feel the love because everybody's lining up for all this great pasta. So that's one of the other great things that are going on here tonight at Art Walk. Lots of great food. We already checked out the cannolis, the homemade pasta being made over there, and now lasagna. And let's see what else is going on. We have lots of people over here dining out, enjoying the night. And let's see what's over here at this table where I see lots of fruit hanging. There you go. 
Hi there. All right, it looks like over at this booth we, booth we have everybody's. So what are you doing out here tonight, bud? Selling some fruit. Uh, is there anything special about this fruit here? It's all from everybody's, it's all organic. All right, and what makes organic fruit different than the fruit you might buy at a different store? Well, uh, for one, the way it's grown, they don't use pesticides and everything on it, and uh, they don't genetically engineer it. It's better fruit. All right, well, are you having fun here tonight? Yeah, definitely. All right, well, great talking to you. Have a good night. Yeah, All right, we'll see what's kind of going else is going on here tonight at Art Walk. All right, we're here at another great food vendor here tonight at Art Walk. Isabella's Italian Ice, unique and refreshing is what the sign says. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Isabella's Italian Ice? Uh, well, basically it's like ice cream without the added fats. and It's better, right? Yes, it's better than ice cream. And it's really big in the on the East Coast and around like New York and stuff. And Where are you guys from? Well, we are from Hampton, Iowa. It's up north a little ways. Yeah. And we go all around to different fairs around Iowa and I think we go, Oklahoma, we got into a few fairs down there too. So, What are some of the flavors that you have out here tonight? I see lots of you know bright colors and mixed colors. What, what's your favorite? What would you recommend to us? Uh, my favorite is probably the tie-dye. It's lemon, lime, and blue raspberry. Then there's also uh, Strawberry banana swirl, that's pretty good. Then the mango is also a big seller, so. Well, it looks very good, and it's you know a nice night. Everybody needs something cool to help cool them off because we got rid of that rain and the sun's out, and so it's a great night. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Thank you. All right, now we have one of our special visitors here today who is out here carving marble, and I believe you just said it was from uh, some part of Italy. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're doing here tonight? Um, I'm demonstrating marble carving because it's, of course, very famous in Italy where Michelangelo carved. So I sent for some marble from Carrara. This is a piece. I had a very large piece, but these are small ones that came off of it. And, and what are uh, some of the, th you know, some of the things that you specialize in making out of this marble? Um, well, you can see a few pieces here. Um, can you focus on an image like this? So, these are all made of stone. And these are all some of your pieces of work, correct? Yes. Wow. And are you from here in Fairfield locally? Um, I've lived here 25 years. Great. I know they always say we have local artists on hand, and it's always nice to come out and see, you know, some of the work that you do. Mm -hmm. so and what are there different types of marble that are easier to work with than others? Mm -hmm. Carrara is a little softer than, say, this Rutland, Vermont, which is a gray. Here's another one. It's quite pretty when it's polished. It's pink, and um, it's a very simple. There's a chisel and a and what are you working on right here? This is a bird, the beginning of a dove, and this is my inspiration here. And what's your name? I'm Alexandra Stimson. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right, well, it looks like you're having a lot of fun, and people are, I think, just amazed at how you're able to take a piece of stone and chisel out just right to make it, you know, turn into one of these beautiful pieces over here. How did you first pick this up? Um, when I was a girl, <laughs> I went to a, a class at the Brooklyn Museum Art School, and I met a Japanese sculptor there who taught me how to sharpen tools and do all those things, and I just fell in love with it and been working that in stone and wood ever since. So. And have you found that there's a certain technique or a certain you know knack that helps you as you're going along to get things just right or make the piece really you know start to form? Um, I do a method called direct carving which is like you say you just feel it out. I look at a stone and I sort of see something in it and I go for that and I, I start roughing it out with just a point where you remove large areas and then go from there with finer and finer tools. And when you're working, it's just like knitting or anything else. You just get in the zone and you're just with that 
and it's exciting when it starts to emerge from the stone and take a life of its own. That's the joy. So. Great. Well, you're doing a wonderful job, and some of the pieces and things you've done are absolutely beautiful. So we'll let you get back to work and show everybody how these beautiful creations are made. Have a great night. Thank you. All right, we're out here at George's now where they've gone Italian for the night as well. Everybody's lined up to get a great slice of pizza that they're offering. Let's go and check out some other great food vendors here tonight. One place people stop on their way here at Art Walk is the Artisan Gallery. So come on, follow me inside, and we'll see some of the great things that people here at Fairfield and abroad have come up with. Fairfield's first Friday's Art Rock, all thing Italian, is very successful tonight. It can be explained by food, fun, music, and lots of great things going on here. So if you, hopefully you enjoyed our series here on FPAC, where we showed you some of the highlights of tonight's event. For FPAC, I'm Emily Humble reporting.